So here we go, everybody. Welcome to the first In The Pictures, the series where I speak to special guest. I've got a special guest here, very special guest, former town captain, Matt Holland. Matt, it's a pleasure to have you on. We're going to go through some great pictures of your town career. But how's things? Pretty good, actually, yeah. Um, wasn't too well over Christmas. Thankfully, full, fully recovered. Um, and looking forward to the second half of the season now. Lots to look forward to as an Ipswich Town yep. fan. So, fingers crossed we get promoted this year. Definitely, mate. Bring it on. Um, we're here at Porton Roads and some iconic moments in your town career has happened here. Uh, we've got the first picture and it's this one here. Um, a very young... Matt Holland here. Um, take a look. Yeah. Share your thoughts. Um, you holding the scarf, the standard um, signing picture. Um, your thoughts on when you first signed for the club. 1997 from Bournemouth. What, what's your memories of that day? Yeah, it takes me back this one. A uh, hugely proud moment, to be honest. Um, 25 years ago. It's, it, seems, it seems like yesterday. Uh, I, I had a lot of chat with George Burley prior to signing. Um, there was a lot of to and fro in terms of the fee. Yeah. Uh, it took a while. It took a long time. It took all through pre-season, actually. Just a, it was just about a week before the season started, before I eventually signed. Um, but a, a hugely proud day for me to come and sign for a club of, of this size. Um, you know, growing up and, and watching Ipswich Town and some of the players that played for Ipswich Town, Mick Mills, George Burley, Alan Bazil, Tyson Muran, uh, the list goes on. It was just an iconic team. And so to be able to come and play for this club was, was a dream come true. Yeah. And as you can see in this picture, and it'll flash up now, um, Porton Row looks very different to what it is right now behind us, you know, two tiers. Um, what's your sort of memories of that stadium as it was? You know, that was a, that North Stand down there. I know a lot of town fans loved it because it was a terrace and everything. And, it was, it was great. To be honest, it, it is a long time ago and it's hard yeah. to think back really and yeah. how, it, how it was because obviously things have changed so much here, here at the club. Um, but it was a, it, always a special atmosphere. Yeah. I think that's the, the first thing you'd say, particularly under the lights yeah. at Portman Road. It always felt really special. Every time you walked, you know, every time you drove up to the ground, you can see it from a distance. You see the ground as you come in. Um, every time you walked out onto the pitch, it just felt special. It felt like home. And um, it's, it's nice to be back here now in a capacity working with the club and, and, um, and being a part of it again because it is such a special club. Definitely, mate. And haven't changed much, to be fair. I wish, I wish. And a lot of people say that to me, but yeah. when I look back at this, I realise how much I, I have aged. Yeah. Um, I remember this day really well because I was actually really early getting to the ground. Okay. Um, and, it, and it took me a while to find it, to be honest, yeah. because when I, when I was coming from, I was driving from Bournemouth in the morning um, where I was playing at the time. Came up the A12, got to the Toys R Us roundabout, and instead of going straight on, I turned right. So instead yeah. of coming straight into the town, I went right. So I ended up coming through the docks, really, that way yeah. into, into the ground. Um, sat nav was obviously hopeless at the time, and it, but I eventually found it. But I was, still, I was still an hour early. I'm always early. That's First my, impressions and all that. It's my motto. Yeah. That is my motto. Yeah. I'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. So yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people that hates being late. So I'm always early for things, yeah. and my wife just goes mad at me for it. Um, but I was here really early for, for um, meet, the meeting and the signing and then the unveiling. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, you can see my, my smile on my face. It's uh, uh, the opportunity to go up a league as well because yeah. I was playing in League One at the time. This was the championship. This was a team that had been knocking on the door as well because you know, Georgia got them in the playoffs the previous season and um, it, it, we were building and it, it was um, good to be a part of it. Okay, next picture, Matt, is a very rare moment in an outfield player's point of view. You had to go and goal for one game against Oxford here at Portman Road, um, a game which saw seven goals, a 5-2 win for town, but uh, you had to go and goal for Richard Wright for a brief period. Um, we've got a picture here of you taking possibly a goal kick, maybe a, yeah. uh, maybe a free kick, you never know. But Quite an eventful game, this one. Um, went in goal, conceded, came back onto pitch, scored, Gave a penalty away and we won 5-2. So it was quite, quite an yeah. event. You don't see this very often now, actually, do you? Out, outfield players going in goal because all teams have got sub-goalkeepers. So um, it's not something that's a, a regular occurrence anymore. But it, it did used to happen quite a lot. Neil Warnock famously didn't have um, sub-goalkeepers, yeah. did he, on, on the bench? He just used an outfield player to go in goal because it, because it was so rare for a goalkeeper to get injured. I mean, Neil Gregory was, was someone who did it regularly for us here at Ipswich. Um, it's something I sort of had done previously I did it for West Ham Reserves as well I went in goal at Highbury actually um, and played against Arsenal Reserves and we lost 2-1 but I played the whole second half in goal and actually did alright in that um, and I used to do it in training messing about going in the goal in for the fiver sides and stuff so, so I think when um, Richard Wright went down I sort of took responsibility and said 
I'll do it. I'm looking back at this picture. I mean, it look, I look ridiculous because the shirt's about yeah. four times too big for me. Um, and, and actually, I think the goal I conceded, it came from a corner and I came trying to fly out and, and sort of punch the ball, realised I was never going to get there, stood, stood still and Kevin Francis, who was six foot seven anyway, <laughs> jumped about eight foot five and just nodded it past me. So it was a bit of a, bit of a, a, bit of a mess really, the, the, um, the goal I conceded. Uh, but yeah, quite quite an eventful eventful game and something, but something I didn't mind doing yeah. to be honest. I mean, they say you got to be mad to be a goalkeeper, but um, I, I didn't mind doing it. I'd like to know the stat of um, someone who's gone in goal and then come out of goal and scored as well. You know, you know, Richard Wright had to have loads of stitches. So we'll put a picture yeah. up. Um, who's Goldie gloves with that? Do you do you remember? No, they're Richards. Yeah, they're, Richard. they're Richards as well. They're, they're about five times too big <laughs> as well. So there's no way. I mean, I, I flip them over because because yeah. he was, his hands are so much bigger than mine. You can see the shirt as well. Yeah. Um, and it was a nasty injury that, that Richard got actually yeah. the, the cut he got was a really really severe yeah. one um, and he was off for a bit, quite a period of time yeah. to get stitched up I think he's probably off for about 10 minutes maybe a little bit longer oh, it felt like an eternity it felt like longer anyway yeah. while I was in goal um, yeah it's uh, one to look back on that though but um, I, I didn't mind doing it I didn't mind doing it but I much prefer to be on pitch felt much more at home okay next picture is Involving you in a celebration, but a man who sort of, uh, it's called the Drupton Derby, um, a 5 0 win against the old enemy Norwich. Um, Alex Matty, you celebrating with him, a first half hat trick. What's your memories of this great picture, you know, celebrating with, with Alex? It's quite an iconic picture, this, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I think we, we sent out the DVD of this one. This, yeah. one, this one sold well. It was a, a great day, a yeah. great day. Um, Alex Matty scored a hat trick and came off at half time. I mean, there's not too many players do that yeah. either. Um, score a first half hatching and then don't come out for the second half. They like, had yeah, a slight injury. And then Bobby Petter scored twice in, in the second half as well. But we, we ran all over them that day. Absolutely ran all over them. Um, but yes, yeah, so, yeah, so an iconic picture that myself and, and Alex. It's one that sort of done the rounds, that yeah. one. Um, but it's, it's a nice one to look back on. Okay then, Matt. It's on to a special day. Wembley 2000. 4-2 win against Barnsley. Playoff final, we finally did it. Uh, we've got some great pictures here. We're going to start off with this one. We're yeah. going up. You're holding the sign. You've got George Burley, Dow Roberts in the backgrounds. You know, the old Wembley as well. Yeah. Yeah, just take it away. Well, it's, it's making me emotional looking at it or, uh, you know, just looking back at it. it. What a moment, what a day. I think if, if you can guarantee going up through the playoffs, it's, it's the way to do it. Yeah. In front of, you know, 40, 50,000 Ipswich Town fans, um, being able to celebrate with them like this after the game, the culmination of a lot of hard work. Yeah. You know, we've been knocking on the door for quite some time. As I said, we got in the playoffs the year before I signed. Yeah. Um, then we were in the playoffs three years yeah. running and, and sort of missed out at the semi final stage a couple of times. Um, to finally get to Wembley, to finally get up into the, into the Premier League. Um, this was. It, it's, it, as, a, as a player, you're always trying to reach the next level. Yeah. And, you know, as I say, I was at Bournemouth in League One. The move to Ipswich was a good one because it was in the Championship. And then the next step was the Premier League. Can we get into the Premier League? And this is the day that it all happened. This is the day sort of, uh, you know, I was able to sit with my dad after this game at home. I mean, we celebrated at the, at the Suffolk showground. Yeah. We had a great celebration the, the bus journey home, the supporters on the bridges. I mean, yeah. the great memories. Um, but to be honest, my, my, my best bit of that day was sitting with my dad, watching back the game um, and being able to just sit with him and say, Dad, we did it. Dad, we got to, we, we got to the Premier League because um, I'm getting emotional now talking about it because he, he was my biggest supporter. And without him, I'd never have been a, a, a footballer because um, he took me here, there and everywhere to, to realise my dreams and pushed me really hard to, to um, be the best. Never, never pushed me in a way that, you know, I felt under pressure, but, but just, you know, wanted the best for me. And I wanted to do it for him. Um, and so for us to be able to sit watching it on the TV at home after this and, and just sit with a beer and say, Dad, we're, we'll be in the Premier League next year. It was a, it was a fabulous day, fabulous day. What a game. What a game. <laughs> what a game. I mean, we, we like to do it the hard way, don't we? Yeah. And, and we've done it the hard way throughout the season. There were so many games that year that were, where we'd gone behind in matches. But we had great character, yeah. great personalities, um, which you know, we have to credit George, really, with yeah. his recruitment. It wasn't just good players. It was good personalities and good people. 
and, and that makes a big difference. And, and we went behind in so many games that season that um, it didn't phase us going behind in, in the game at, at Wembley either. We always felt we could come back in and win it because I'll tell you what we had as well. We had lots of different goal scorers. Yeah. All over the pitch, we had people who were capable of scoring goals. Um, and so it proved on the day as well. So um, culmination of a lot of hard work, but a, a, a really proud day. Definitely. And we've got some other pictures here as well. Yeah. Of course, lifting the trophy. Uh, it's a long walk up there, isn't it? It is a long walk up there, particularly when you've, you, you've got this sort of the nervous excitement anyway of the game. Yeah. Um, so your legs are a bit tired. But I tell you what, it's a, it's a longer walk when you've not won. Yeah. <laughs> Again, getting your runners up medal, cool. I, can, I can tell you that. So yeah. to go up and lift a trophy at Wembley. Is I, it heavy? I, can, you know, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, honestly, right. couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you. No, All I can tell you is as a kid growing up, my dream was to lift a trophy at Wembley. Yeah. You know, and, and I probably envisioned it being an FA Cup, yeah, maybe yeah. if I'm being honest. Yeah. Look, look, fortunately, we were able to do that at Ipswich. I, I wasn't, but... Um, uh, I mean, to lift the trophy at Wembley, to point that trophy in the direction yeah. of the sea of blue and white uh, and the reaction of the supporters and the reaction of my teammates. And, the, and I remember cuddling David Sheepshanks on the way, on yeah. the way up, actually, and, and uh, on the way to go and get the trophy. Um, that was, yeah, that's, that's pretty special. And uh, we've got another picture here with Jim Magilton, the man who, the legend. Mad magic, you know. Legend, magic man, yeah. No, what a legend. I, I love Jim. And um, you, I think football teams are built on partnerships they're yep. built on relationships between two center halves the the full back and the wide player the two midfield players the two center forwards whatever it might be it's built on partnerships and it's built on relationships with people on the pitch and i think it's important that you have two uh, different people yep. different personalities different uh, characters different qualities on the pitch as well and i think we complemented each other so well I mean, he always says, he always says, let the, let the players play and the runners run. And yep. he, he's called himself the player, which fair enough. Um, and I was the runner. I was the, someone that did the work, ran about, got the ball, gave it to Jim, got myself in the box, got myself a goal. Um, but we, we work well together. Yep. We dovetail well together and we got on well as well. Actually, I spoke to Jim only, only a couple of weeks back, actually, and he was in really good form. Good. He was in really good form. It was really good to speak to him. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I loved him as a personality. He, he drove standards around the place. I mean, talked about George and the characters that he, he brought to the club. Jim was a big character. And sometimes you just had to sort of take him with a pinch of salt yeah. at times because he, he, he could go off on one and he could... And sometimes it had to just calm him down and just, just tell him to relax at times because he had that hot-headed nature. Um, and again, that's where it works well. You know, he had that. And I, I was someone who could, could sort of... I, I don't know, just, just assess the situation on the pitch and maybe just calm things down at times and calm him down yeah. at times as well. But at the same time, he wanted to drive the team on. We all wanted to drive the team on. Yeah. We were all ambitious and really, um, really, really desperate to get into the Premier League. And of course, we'll never forget his hat-trick, oh. the, the, the Jim Majulton hat-trick here. I mean, he, he wasn't a noted for his regular goal-scoring, yeah. Jim. I mean, he scored, he scored goals and he scored plenty of them as well, but he, you know, he wasn't a regular goal-scorer, if you like. I mean, what a hat trick. Yeah. What a hat trick. What a player. What, what a teammate. And um, yeah, pleasure to play alongside him. Definitely. And one more thing on Wembley, because um, we're going to be looking at some Cornhill pictures as well, celebration, open top boss parade. But what was it like playing at the old Wembley for the final time? Because, you know, of course it got demolished and, you know, there's a new Wembley now, which is beautiful. I'm yeah. sure you've been there multiple times. But yeah, what was that like knowing you're going to be one of the last teams to play there? To be honest, it, 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 Again, it's just been nice to be a part of history, isn't yeah. it? You know, to be to be played at the old Wembley is a nice thing to do. The, the twin towers and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, you know, the drive up to Wembley. As a kid growing up, you used to watch the the buses driving up to the FA Cup match, the the FA Cup final, and that, and that drive in, seeing the twin towers and all that sort of stuff. And so it was iconic for us being on that bus and dri on that drive into into Wembley. Um, so it's nice to be a part of history. I, again, to be honest, those sort of things are just. Uh, almost like a side thing really yeah. the most important thing that day was was getting the win it didn't matter where we were I mean we could, we could have played on the park pitch in Ipswich yeah. it, as long as we got into the Premier League it didn't matter so uh, nice to be a part of history but at the same time the most important thing was getting up Alright then Matt we've got some great pictures here Cornhill celebrations oh, of course Ipswich Town as a whole as a centre has changed completely um, we're going to start off with this one Open bus parade, and to be part of that, you're, you're front and centre there yeah. with, a, with a few players, Marcus there, Marcus Stewart, uh, Fabian there as well, it's George Burley just in the corner there, but yeah, what's your memories of this? To be honest, I think I was, I was going on international duty, maybe the next day, okay. actually, uh, or, or I might have even been due to go this day, 
and managed to be able to delay going away um, so that I could be part of the celebrations really which was which was obviously nice of, of Mick McCarthy at the time to, to allow me to to go and do that um, what a day what, I, what I, I talked about when we won the trophy and we drove back with the fans on the bridges and all that sort of stuff but to see Ipswich Town Centre full of people just celebrating us getting into the it was just frightening really that the numbers that turned up to see us um, I mean, you don't get those numbers now for maybe Ed Sheeran, maybe you might get yeah. those numbers, might he, if yeah. he, he turned up in Ipswich, but crikey, it was, it was unreal. Um, great to see some of these faces as well. Some of the, you know, I'm just looking at this now. Uh, Marcus Stewart, Wayne Brown, Fabian Wilness, is that Scoey as well? Yeah. Looks like Gary Croft, Jamie Clapham. Um, great characters, great teammates. And uh, yes, it's, it's God, I'm not sure about the suit, mind. I'm not sure about the suit. <laughs> I think that's one for the archives. Definitely. And I've got some other great pictures here. Let's, let's go with this one. Yeah. Um, and once again, more players here. And let's, Love let's this have, picture. Let's have a nice special moment, um, a mention for, for Tara yeah. Roberts there. Yeah, what a man. What a man. Sadly missed. Really, really sadly missed. Um, loved him. Loved him to pieces. He, he was a brilliant foil for yeah. George. He and George were, were best mates. And um, he, he was a brilliant sideman to George. George was someone that liked to, to do everything. George liked to be in control of everything. He did the coaching, he did, you know, set up his sessions. Um, and Dale was happy to take that slightly withdrawn um, role where he wasn't necessarily as involved in much. But he was always keen to pass on his advice, pass on some information, help me enormously in terms of trying to make me a better footballer, spent time with me on the training ground. Um, but a brilliant character to have around as well. I think it's important with the number two as well to have that, that bridge between the manager yeah. and the players and someone who could, could communicate with both. Uh, obviously, he had that relationship with George, but with the players as well, he had a great way about him it, where we all liked him. You know, it's not often you, you, you get a member of the coaching staff as well liked as, yeah. as Dale, but he was a really funny guy. Uh, he used to do the, the weigh-in every Friday, so we used to weigh the players in every Friday, and it, it, it was quite comical. It, it, it was the same line every week. Yeah. So every time, every time Jim McGilton got on the scales, his line, Dale's line was one at a time. Yeah. One at a time, because it, 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 obviously great. Jim was a little bit, not, not overweight, but he was sort of a little bit rounder, yeah. wasn't he? So he was always a bit nervous, Jim, about getting on the scales with, with Dale, but he'd always say one at a time. It was a brilliant line that he used to say. And um, yeah, he was, he was a great character, great, great bridge between George and, George and the team. And speaking of Jim, we've already spoke about him already in this video, but you're yeah. once again, you're with Jim. Um, yeah. With Cheesy, the, with grim. The club. Yeah. Cheesy Grim. We both look very young there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I mean, I've spoken about Jim already quite a lot. He's, he's um, you know, great character. Um, desperately trying to get him back to Portland Road yes. in, the next, in the next six months or so. He's not been back since, since he left. Um, obviously, there was a um, yeah, fairly acrimonious split mm -hmm. was when, he, when he left the club. And um, so watch this space. We're hoping to get Jim back to, the, back to the club in the next six months or so. So that would be nice if we can get him back before the end of the season. That'd be good. That's great to hear. And um, one final picture, um, just you alone with the cup, the suit, um, yeah, blue, blue, flat, you know, look at that. See a blue down yeah. there. Um, yeah, let's forget that bit. Let's, yeah. for, let's forget that bit of me. Yeah. I, I'm not, not keen on looking at that too much. Yeah. Hair's terrible as well, but hey, um, look at the support. Yeah. Just look at the numbers. Just, I mean, what a moment. To, to stand there in front of the, the supporters and, and them singing their songs and just being a part of that. As I say, luckily I was there really because I was, I was thought supposed, supposed to be on international duty, but that is really good picture. Well, if you take me out of it. Okay, Matt, it's been spoken about many times, but what a season. Um, 2000, 2001 season, fifth in the Premier League. Marcus Stewart scoring the goals. What a season. We've got some great pictures here. Let's, let's start with this one. You and Scoey and, and, and Marcus Stewart. Um, yeah, what's your memories of, of this season? Well, I love this picture as well. This, is, yeah. this is, sums us up, actually, as a yeah. group. Brothers in arms. Yeah. What a team. Yeah, we were a great group, all good friends, and that sums us up brilliantly. So I think that's a great picture yeah. to, to show. I think Scoey might have scored in this game yeah. against Leeds uh, uh, away. Big win for us that early on in the season. Gave us confidence. Um, Marcus Stewart, what a player. I mean... It, he, he, he was probably the difference between us going up uh, and not, yeah. really, when George signed him in, in the January. He made a difference when he, when he arrived. His movement, his sharpness, his quality in front of goal, um, his cleverness, his awareness of people around him. 
I mean, I speak now, my son, my son was sort of, I was talking to him not long ago, two or three weeks ago about Marcus. And he said he was, for him, his favourite player in our team. When he watches back some of the games, he said the way he played, the way he thought about the game, he was his favourite player. And, and I can totally see why. He, he's, he's just such a gifted, gifted football. Half a yard extra pace. Yeah. And what, and you talk, I mean, you're talking millions and millions yeah. and millions. And t- to be honest, he was so unlucky not to have played for England. Should have played for England. Yeah. He, should have, he should have had a call-up. He should have absolutely 100% got a call-up for, for, the, for the performance that he put in. Run to getting us up. Yeah. And then in that, in that season as well, he was just brilliant. So um, can't speak highly enough of him. And um, obviously very sad what's yeah. what the, the news that we, we've sort of found out about Marcus. But he's a fighter and we're all there with him. And as I say, this picture says that as well. We, you know, brothers in arms, he's, he's one of us. He's, he's all, once a blue, always a blue. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're, we're with him all the way. Definitely. And we've got another picture here. You celebrating with Marcus Alan Armstrong yeah. in the background as well. A goal against Newcastle. Yeah. And we've got to talk about the gloves, haven't we? Talk about the gloves. Yeah, Alan was a really underrated player as well, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, he? Scored against Inter Milan, of course, yeah, in, in both games. Um, Marcus's gloves, yeah. I mean, it's mad, isn't it, really? When you look back now, short sleeves and gloves. It doesn't, yeah. make, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, does it? It just, it, where's the sense in it? Yeah. But it, it was obviously his thing. Every player's got these weird little idiosyncrasies, yeah. whatever they might be. Don't let any player tell you that they haven't got like these 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 little things that they do. I mean, I used to sort of wear two pairs of socks at times. I used to I, you know, same underpants if we'd won a game. All that sort of things. You, you always just have these little things that you do. And Marcus obviously had these these gloves which were iconic. And I know the club are selling them again now aren't they? Yeah, they in, in the club shop, which is which is brilliant. And the and the proceeds going to yeah. MND as well. So that's a, a fabulous gesture as well but yeah so it's, when you look back and think it's mad really short sleeves and gloves it just doesn't make any sense Come up next then Matt is talking about your battles with Premier League icons um, first up Frank Lampard yeah. the battle of the eights um, what was that like playing against players like Frank Lampard Steven Gerrard and the likes yeah I mean to be honest that's what football's all about really yeah. testing yourself against the very best players and seeing where you rank amongst them seeing you know how you compare against them I mean Frank there's, there's obviously a, a a big history really with Frank Lampard and myself now Frank Lampard's dad was actually the one that got me to West Ham in, really? initially he sort of spotted me on the sideline got me to West Ham originally um, and then of course he, he was sort of a few years younger than me coming through the ranks and I was sort of trying to push into the first team but he was a little bit and he was a little bit lower than me uh, younger than me sorry and there's that famous video where Harry Redknapp says about Frank Lampard, he's going right to the top and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So there's quite a bit of history really between yeah. himself and Frank. But I really like him as a guy. Yeah. I really liked his dad and, and um, he, he was a fabulous player. Different to Steven Gerrard, very different to Steven Gerrard in, in the fact that with Steven Gerrard, you knew that he would do the running with you. He, yeah. he, if you made a run forward, he'd track you back. If he went forward, you'd track him and the, it'd be a real competitive game. With Frank, he was really clever, really clever in the way he played. Didn't always necessarily track you all the way. Yeah. He was hanging out, ready to attack, ready to go the other way and be a problem at, at the other end of the pitch. And, and his goal scoring record is phenomenal for, for a midfield player. But he was clever. Yeah. He didn't always do that tracking back side of the game. I'm not saying he didn't work hard because he worked incredibly hard at his game and, and he was a fabulous player, but he was um, very different to Steven Gerrard. I mean, I, Played against some great players in the Premier League. If you think about the time that I was in, the, in there, I mean that Man United midfield of Keane, Skulls, yeah. Bart, Neville, um, Beckham, Giggs. It was a, a ridiculous midfield that, that Man United had. Um, Patrick Vieira. Uh, oh. uh, so you got Patrick Vieira. Yeah, right got a here. Of Patrick there we Vieira. go. You there you go. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick Vieira. Um, I've actually got a Patrick Vieira shirt. I, as I say, I've not not one that changed too much. Got a Paul Gascoigne shirt got to, yeah. as well. Paul, Paul Gascoigne shirt. And the funny story, really, about Paul Gascoigne. Um, we were playing at uh, Goodison, and it was a breaking play about 20 minutes in, maybe an injury or something. And I was sort of stood next to Paul Gascoigne, and he had my name written on his hand, okay. written on the back of his hand. And I said to him, like, "What's all that about?" He said, "To be honest," he said, "I always forget who I'm supposed to be marking." He said, "So I have to write it on the back of my hand just to make sure I remember Brilliant. who I'm supposed to be marking." So, um, but some great characters and some great players that you that you're testing yourself against. Um, I mean, Man United was my team gr- growing up, so so playing against that midfield and against Roy Keane, playing with Roy Keane, of course, for Ireland as well was was always the ultimate test. Um, but Vieira, 
I mean, Lampard, Gerrard, some, some iconic players in, in that era, really, in the Premier League, and, and great to go head to head against them. Kelly okay, Matt, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining me. We've got one more picture and many other pictures to look through as well. But to sum up your town career, in a few words, how would you do it? And this picture here, I think, sort of sums it up nicely. A great little celebration. Open your arms up at Portman Road. Yeah. You just look so happy there, my friend. I do look happy there. It's hard to put into just a few words, really, yeah, of my, my time at the club. Um, from the minute I signed, this place felt like home. I mean, that's the, that's the first thing to say. I was immediately welcomed by the supporters um, and it just felt like I'd been here forever. And it, that is the, the, the biggest compliment I can play, pay the supporters and, and the club for making me feel so at home for a 23-year-old moving away, um, coming into the area and, and feeling at home. Uh, it's a privilege to have pulled on the shirt that's all I can say, really, to, to have played for this great club that has been represented by so many fabulous players, so many fabulous characters. And um, the support now at, at the club, it, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, you, I can't speak highly enough of, of the fans and, and how they're turning up in their numbers week after week. Um, t over 25,000 at home games, taking huge numbers away from home. It just feels like the club has gone through a tricky period. It feels like the club has had, um, has stagnated, has stood still, yeah. has gone backwards a little bit in the last sort of 10 years. Um, but the last 18 months, it's been reinvigorated. It's, it's been given a shot in the arm that it desperately needed. There's investment, there's investment off the field, there's investment on the field. We've got a brilliant manager. We've got a group of players that remind me of this group of players that I played with, really, because we, we were a team. And I think we're seeing a team now. We're seeing everyone fighting for the badge. We've got some brilliant people. Sam Morsey leading the way. Love Connor Chaplin. He's, got, yeah. he, he, you know, he's just such a great character. Um, but we've got a team full of, of great people at the moment. And I just hope that we can emulate some of this success. You know, we, we were always trying to emulate the late 70s, the early 80s team because you know, the iconic um, and we were able to have a bit of success. We, we did all right. And hopefully, I'm really hoping that this group can do something similar because the club deserves it. The supporters deserve it. And yeah, as I say, I, I've sort of gone on, I've rambled on a little no, bit, but it's, it's, it, it's hard for me to put into just a very few words yeah, how much it means the club and the badge and the, this place. And as I say, it's a privilege to be back here now. I mean, I'm wearing the badge now. It's, 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 it's just nice to be back involved with the club um, and back home. I always, said I'd, I always said when I left the club that I'd be back in some capacity. I always hoped it would be as a player. I always hoped that I'd come back and finish my career here and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, circumstances, whatever else, it, it, it just didn't happen or whatever. But um, to be back here now and to be part of a club that I feel is going in the right direction um, is nice and long may that continue and let's just hope for that bit of success I think everyone deserves it definitely hopefully mate and um, I can't top that um, Matt thank you so much for joining me it's been a pleasure thank you thank you